Good morning. Welcome to the Editorial Edge. Uh, my name is Bhuvan and I welcome all those of you who are joining me live and those who will be watching this over the course of the whole day. Okay. Uh, very quickly, can you just let me know if my voice is audible to you, if you can see me all right, the screen behind me all right, because we have had a few comments in the past wherein students have said that my voice has been not very clear. So very quickly, just let me know if that is all right or else I can get it uh, quickly checked and then we shall begin. Okay. Bulbul, good morning. Arka, good morning. Welcome, welcome guys. Okay. Uh, just let me, give me the confirmation ASAP. Meanwhile, I have four topics for you. Uh, all four of them have found uh, mention in various articles across newspapers, across portals. And questions out of them really uh, can be formed to a deeper extent. So I think it warrants a closer look from our side too. Okay. Good morning, Mandeep, Rajan. Thanks for letting me know, Arka. Great, great. All right. So uh, we ought to take a closer look at them. Okay. Thanks, Mandeep. Thank you. Good, good. Thanks. All right. So we'll begin then. Okay. If you're watching this for the first time, this is my uh, Telegram channel. And I'm happy to announce that because of this Telegram channel and uh, the feedback that I receive from my students, not just say in the Telegram channel, but also in my email, we have finally decided to start the uh, environment series. Okay. That will be starting this Monday, coming Monday. And uh, all of the details I will be sharing on my Telegram channel. May I inform you, it will cover the whole syllabus, okay, from the prelims up until the interviews with a special focus on question solving. All right. So, this is the one announcement that I had for you. I hope that many of you consider joining me live. Okay, we can go ahead and solve questions. Some questions obviously will be put forth in the Telegram channel also. Okay. Good morning, Deepak. Thanks. Soumya, good morning. All right. So, the four topics that I have for you, we are going to discuss mental health today. All right. Uh, a very oft neglected topic, okay, not just say uh, in, the, in the larger discussion around say the global burden of disease, but also as an individual level, we tend to overlook mental health, okay. And so the government of India has taken a lot of steps in that direction. One of them, which we will discuss today is the Telemanus initiative, okay, very important. So we'll take a look at the Telemanus as well as a larger context on the mental health aspect, okay, we'll just have a look at it. Thereafter, we'll discuss cannabis in India. Okay, cannabis has again uh, different names in different parts of the world. It's known by pot and this and that, many different names. However, from the Indian perspective, we are going to realize that, well, there is an institution in India that has now got the license to cultivate cannabis. Okay, several states are considering their own, say, a strategy insofar as cannabis is concerned. Okay. So we are going to take a look at it. Obviously, it has a social value also. You find usage of this, say, in various festivals, in religious offerings. But we'll take a look at the scientific aspect of it as to why, why governments are suddenly interested in cannabis. Okay. Third one is the privilege motion. So yesterday or day before yesterday, uh, Mallika Arjun Kharge, uh, the leader of the Congress party. So he said that his mic was switched off. Okay. And so he wanted to move a breach of privilege because again, it's his right to speak as a member of the parliament in the Rajya Sabha. However, he alleged that well, his mic was switched off. So we'll take a look at the privilege. You know, what is the privileges that are accorded to the members of parliament? What is a breach of privilege? And thereafter, we'll seek to understand a recent court ruling by the Kerala High Court, okay, which essentially says that, okay, members of parliament do have privilege, but do they have the right of vandalism? Okay. Do they have the right of misrepresentation? So we'll take a look at that conversation. The mains question also originating for today out of the privilege discussion today. Okay. And then thereafter, we'll take a look at the who log given, one of the more uh, frequently asked questions uh, by the UPSC. Uh, in fact, the critically endangered species in India is one aspect that you should be completely aware of. Now, there are a host of species, say from mammals, reptiles, amphibians, fishes, birds, but make a note of the major ones at least. Okay. The IUCN red list, especially for the Indian context. So, we'll take a look at that discussion also. Okay, okay let's begin uh, with our questions from yesterday. And so, this is the first question that I had for you after we discussed uh, the Forest Conservation Amendment Bill that has been passed in the Lok Sabha, now traveling to the Rajya Sabha. So, the first question, as per recent amendment to the Indian Forest Act 1927, forest dwellers have the right to fell the bamboos grown on forest areas. Please understand this first. This is the operative line here. Okay, to fell the bamboo grown on forest areas. Now, please understand that forest areas is forest land. Okay, 
whereas uh, bamboo and the say harnessing of bamboo from the forest areas is not allowed okay however if you have bamboo that grows on non forest land then that is allowed you also know from yesterday's class that bamboo is essentially a grass which is classified as a tree okay so this is incorrect purely because of the fact that it talks about forest areas which means forest land which is not allowed okay you can't go in forested areas and then go and get bamboo for yourself no but if it's a non forest land absolutely allowed in fact it is categorized as a minor forest produce clear question number 2 as per the schedule tribes and uh, forest dwellers act bamboo is a minor forest produce absolutely correct in fact we have a question also on minor forest produce we'll take a look at that too third statement the schedule tribes and other traditional forest dwellers act allows ownership of minor forest produce to forest dwellers absolutely correct which means your answers here are 2 and 3 one is the incorrect statement this is in fact a question from the upsc the previous year question from the upsc uh, prelims that was again put forth i think in the year 2015 or 13 one of those years all right let's look at the second question that i had for you which of the above are classified as minor forest produce now from yesterday's class you know that minor fo minor forest produce are to do with only plant origin okay all goods of plant origin that are not covered under say the various protection laws say wildlife protection act or any of those that is a minor forest produce so you have say things like uh, kendu leaves okay in fact you have in south bengal i have given you the example where individuals go and get sal leaves and then make plates out of it sustainable plates that is allowed okay so you're looking at timber allowed honey allowed tasar kendu leaves allowed elephant tusk is not plant based okay so elephant tusk or say rhinoceros horn or the skin or the uh, skin of a particular animal not allowed that straight away you can you are uh, liable to be charged under the viable uh, wildlife protection act you are looking at a jail term or fine or both okay good morning uh, mansu abhishek thanks for joining guys all right so please understand minor forest produce is to do with plant based products only that are not covered under say wildlife protection act 1972 if they are under schedule 1 or of those protected schedules and if you go ahead and even get those plant based products you are going to jail for sure okay the forest department will sue you so again the answer is here 1 2 3 and 4 okay elephant tusk rhino horns deer skin all right or if you are looking at tiger skin any of those uh, animal based products if you are to go ahead and be in possession of those you are going to get to go to jail enjoy the jail all right next simple question article 51g what does it talk about article 48a what does it talk about okay 51g you know is a part of the fundamental duty 48a is a part of the directive principles of state policy all right so 51g essentially talks about protecting and improving the natural environment including forests and wildlife lakes rivers and having compassion for animals whereas the dpsp the key word to know there is safeguard all right that the state shall work to safeguard animals plants all of that okay an individual can only go ahead and contribute by protecting and improving which means none of the above are correctly matched in this question all right i hope that was clear let's look at c which of the above may be caused by cloud bursts we have discussed this in detail yesterday we discussed where cloud bursts are cloud, cloud bursts are more commonly found you know it by now that in the himalayan region northeastern region western ghats the most probability of having cloud bursts why because you need a so certain sort of barrier for the orographic lift to happen thereafter the adiabatic lapse rate we discussed and eventually the big rain drops falling the balloon getting filled with water and then eventually if you have 100 meter millimeters of rainfall within 60 minutes in an area of 20 to 50 square kilometers imd categorizes this as a cloud burst okay so you're looking at landslides yes flash floods yes mud flows yes land caving yes avalanches well indeed it can be caused due to cloud burst okay so avalanches you can have an ice avalanche or a rock avalanche or you can have a glacial outburst okay all of that can be caused by cloud burst so avalanche also is included in this 
which means all of the above can be caused here by uh, cloud bursts. Next, we discussed mangroves. Very, very important again. Okay. Right from NCRT level, you have to learn about mangroves ke mein. Okay. So, mangrove seeds are buoyant, which means they are able to float on the surface of the sea and suited to water dispersal, obviously. You normally find them in which areas? The intertidal zones, wherein the land and the sea meet, which means they have the ability to disperse through water. Correct. Correct statement, absolutely. Mangroves are resistant to freezing temperature. Well, they are not. You know it by now that mangroves are found in tropical and subtropical areas. Okay. They need warm water. So, if you have freezing temperature suddenly, well, they are going to be completely obliterated. So, this answer is incorrect. Mangroves can survive in low oxygen levels. Yes, they are in fact halophytes. You know it by now that they survive, they thrive in brackish or marine water, in sea water. Yes, are you aware of that? Brackish and marine sea salt water is what they thrive in. They do not like any other sort of water, which means low oxygen levels. Yes. So, the incorrect statements here, well, two only. Two only is the incorrect statement here. Finally, F, which is we talked about plant adaptations, you know. So, animal adaptations, you have, why do you think giraffe has a long neck? It's an animal adaptation. Why do you think dogs in higher altitude have a, like a thick coat or very furry? You know, the same say subspecies of the dog inside the plains will have no coat whatsoever. But why is it that happening? Because of adaptation. How you adapt to the natural environment around you. All right, plants also do that. So you're looking at forming poison for defense against predators. Correct. Developing thorns and spines to conserve water in arid areas. Correct. All right, and phototropism, which means you travel, you look, you always focus towards the sunlight. Correct. Now, you might say that, well, if there are plants that only work towards the sunlight, are there plants that also seek out shade? There are plants also, and that is also a part of adaptation. So, we'll look at auxilophytes. Okay. Now, adaptation to acid environments. Plants are capable of that. You are looking at heliophytes. Helio means sun which means we are talking about phototropism. All right. Skyophytes, shade. Samophytes, plants that thrive in sand. Halophytes like uh, mangroves with pneumatophores. Yes, an adaptation for mangroves is pneumatophores. The pore that they have that allows them respiration. And lithophytes that grow in rocks. So, you have say, certain, certain characteristics like hard roots or roots that go deep into the soil. All of that are plant adaptations to make sure that they survive and thrive in different sorts of environment. I hope that was clear. All right. So, these were the six, seven questions out of yesterday's discussion that we had. Okay, we have one more. Sahel. Well, we discussed the Niger coup attempt yesterday. And besides, obviously, we need to know, have a basic idea of the countries that have had coup attempt, but also know the geographical region. And so, the Sahel region is one of those regions that compasses the Sahara Desert. You are looking at various species, North African cheetah, okay, onyx, all of those species are in the Sahel region. Sahel region going from the Red Sea up until the Atlantic here, the entire region in the middle of the African continent is the Sahel region, which means you are looking at this option, C. All right, make a note of the Sahel region. It's going to be important for you to remember. Not many students will be aware of this. Mentioned in the NCRT, by the way. All right. Okay. So, we have these individuals. Some of them regular names. I am pleased to see their participation. To the rest, I request you. Take part in the answer writing process. Take part in the MCQ answering process. You will see a definite change in your knowledge level in the say, next two, three weeks. That's how quickly your knowledge compounds over time. So, Make sure you are a part of this. If you, after you have gone through the whole lecture, answer the questions in 15 minutes or less. Okay. Most of the answers lie within the discussion that we do here. Okay. It's for your benefit. Go ahead and take part. And to Mandeep, Evergreen, Coder, Rajan, Arka and Karuna, my best wishes. Thank you for taking part. Continue this momentum. Don't let go of this momentum because you are on the right track. All right. Okay. Let's start with our first discussion today on telemanus. Mental health. 
an oft ignored part of say a particular well being of an individual you know most of the time individuals focus on physical health however mental health takes a back seat now why is that firstly let's understand okay we'll discuss what is telemanus later first understand why is it that mental health is not given the due importance from our side so the problem arises right at the individual level okay how do you go ahead and identify that you have a mental problem or some you are suffering from some sort of issues mental issues okay there is almost zero awareness on an individual level so a person might be depressed clinically depressed okay yet on the outset and at, at the face value they might be smiling they might be going about their work in a usual manner and that person also might be unaware that they are say suffering from clinical depression okay so first the problem that we know is individual identification is a problem suppose by god's grace you have gone ahead and identified that okay you are suffering from say x problem now the problem is of social stigma okay who do i approach what do i tell them that these are my symptoms this is what i feel like doing okay lack of awareness big problem thereafter suppose god's grace again you go ahead and talk to someone now you have to approach a psychiatrist or a doctor who is going to help you out straight away you find that there is lack of trained professionals in the market also okay lack of institutional framework to have a say a set of individuals that are being produced on an yearly basis adding to the market of say psychiatrists not happening all right so various issues right from say the individual level up until you go to the hospital you find that there are roadblocks one of the ways in which the government of india is looking to get rid of this roadblocks is to make sure that that social stigma you know that if i do become aware that okay i have a clinical problem well there is a way straight away you can seek help because the problem is of speaking up when you have a mental uh, problem or an issue okay so the problem how is it being addressed telemanus which is tele mental health assistant and networking across states okay the ministry of health and family welfare is the nodal authority the nodal organization that is taking part in fact furthering this whole project of telemanus okay so the digital health network to address mental health problems especially after covid 19 you know and this has been observed so uh, the global burden of diseases you must be aware of that the gbd that mentions that one out of seven individuals in india is suffering from mental problems some sort of minor or major mental health issues okay so obviously that's a huge number you are looking at 140 crore one out of seven out of 140 crore is a huge huge number and again it's not just a health problem you are also looking at underperformance in various sectors say a student may not be able to perform to the best of their ability in the class okay some students have a short attention spans okay some students are able to hold attention for say 30 minutes 40 minutes at a stretch some students can't hold it for more than 2 minutes so there is one more problem there the attention deficit hyper disorder where you are fidgety where you are unable to focus a mental issue that needs to be focused on that needs to be addressed so you see that student is not going to be perform performing well in the class straight away if you have such problems you are looking at the economic angle also your personal well being is affected and your ability to contribute is also affected okay so the objectives of telemanus now this helpline that has been issued started by the government of india number 1 you are looking at reducing social stigma kis se baat kare hai train counselors train psychiatrists who are, who you will they will help you diagnose the problem and then suggest the course ahead what kind of treatment would you like okay number 2 increased penetration of mental health services that no more is this just an urban problem you are also looking at individuals in rural india who probably have problems so far as uh, mental health is concerned okay so to give them easy access to professional services and you are looking at assistance to vulnerable groups especially women and senior citizens okay that their ability to seek help is codependent on say various factors which is why you are straight away giving them that single line approach okay single point of contact go ahead if you feel something is wrong reach out to us speak up all right so that's what telemanus is looking to do now the features please please understand it's a two tier feature that has been thought of okay so if i have to just quickly explain the feature to you so here is it how it's going to work out all right 
So, as an individual, you go ahead and dial on the toll free number, okay, the helpline number. So, now you are connected with an IVRS, like we have always, we have been used to it uh, so far. Ek dabai Hindi ke liye, ek dabai English ke liye, do dabai, all of that, okay. Regional languages, it is there. So, Tamil ke liye, whatever, Kannada ke liye, all numbers are there. Straight away, you are connected with a counsellor, okay. First contact, go ahead, explain your problem. They are trained individuals, they know or probably they know the symptoms of what you are going through. Once the problem has been identified, what happens next? You are hand sent to the nearest mental health specialist. Now that could be a clinical psychologist, a psychiatric social worker, a nurse, whatever. The level of severity of the problem. Okay. So that is it. Single point contact, a counsellor diagnoses your issue, directs you to the nearest, say primary health centre or wherever. Okay. Now, you are also looking at eSanjeevani app. How many of you have started or at least gone ahead and looked at this app? Extremely useful. Okay. So, again, you have a dashboard where you have, say, all the details put forth in front of you. Where is your appointment? When is your appointment? Who the doctor is? All of that is provided. And then finally, you head over to that center, the in-person services. There is also the scope of having emergency services. Suppose you need emergency help. Okay. That can also be done. The counsellor puts you to the mental health specialist who straight away takes you to the nearest health center. Okay. So, do you understand the ramifications of this now? Especially for say particularly vulnerable groups who do not have anyone to turn to. They are looking at a fast, efficient, single point of contact. That whole problem of ki kisse baat kare. Trained individuals hai aapke liye. Alright. So, let's go back and have a look at this now. So, the tier 1, like I told you, it comprises the state telemanus cells, the first point of contact, which include counsellors and health specialists. Tier 2, you go ahead for in-person physical consultation. Okay. So, a toll-free number has been issued for this. Okay. And you are looking at multi-language. So, it is not just Hindi and English, all the languages under the schedule list of India, schedule languages of India included in this. Okay. So, the problem of say connectivity of translation, no more there. You speak your problem in your language, get the solution at hand. Why is the Indian government doing this? Because one out of seven individuals probably, maybe, in fact, suffering from this. Okay. And again, if you are looking at India to become a trillion dollar economy, all of those lofty ideals, ambitions, you need health to be, you know, fortified first. So, physical health is one thing, mental health is also the focus now. Clear? Okay, let's go forward. So now, one important thing that you be, uh, need to be aware of is the Mental Health Care Act. Okay, in the year 2017. Extremely important if you are looking, say, from uh, fodder points for the means. Now, ideally, historically, what you have seen is that mental health has been equated as lunacy. Okay, earlier, okay, earlier what used to happen was that there used to be a Segregated approach. Someone who is sh uh, showing symptoms of say mental health is segregated from the normal, so called normal uh, group. Okay. Then they are, the whole focus is on segregation and treatment. And you are looking at the wrong, like the most intrusive forms of treatment. Shock therapy, you must be aware of, popularized in the movies. Okay. This whole thing that, okay, you are segregated, you are a problem. That shouldn't be the messaging. The messaging has to be that you have a problem and there is an inclusive way to find a solution to it rather than exclude the person from the group and leave him or her to figure it out on, a, on his or her own. Do you understand that? Good morning, Alekha. I hope you guys are able to understand the gist of it. Why that shift has happened? Okay. Why is it that say you have gone from lunacy and now it has become a health issue? Okay. Why? How did that change happen? Because again, earlier it used to be called the lunatic act. Okay. It doesn't make sense. It's a, it's a problem of the health. It needs to be addressed as a problem of the health. Okay. So, decriminalization of suicide. So, earlier you used to have a suicide attempt would be taken as a crime. So, in spite of the fact that you have your own reasons for say, taking an extreme step as that, if in case, God willing, you survive, you are looking at the cops knocking at your door. Imagine that now. Okay. You are looking at restriction on all of these electroconvulsive therapy and psychosurgery, which is in fact that shock therapy that we have all seen and heard in movies. 
that is no more done that is completely inhumane line of treatment okay you are looking at special clause for women and children related to admission treatment sanitation personal hygiene also you can have a nominated representative and a provision of advance directive we'll discuss advance directive now what exactly is advance directive okay so the upsc question how will it be framed advance directive pertains to four options or what does advance directive mean in health terms so what does it mean in one line okay if you have a health problem you ought to have the ability to decide on the say line of treatment okay that the treatment i want and the treatment i don't want for example you go ahead in the hospital you are given a line of treatment you have agreed to a particular thing that okay i do not want medicine x to be given to me or i do not want a particular line of treatment okay i do not want this at all imagine now suppose in the bed you come up and say you know what doctor i think we should go ahead and do xyz it will help me then that advance directive that you had given as a patient to the doctor you are going to override that okay so an advance directive is essentially a directive from the patient to the doctor saying which kind of treatment is required or desired which type of treatment is not desired and my ability my right to have a nominated representative to take a decision for me in case i'm unconscious or unable to are you clear are you clear about this advance directive so you must have seen this in your uh, say immediate uh, friends and family also okay that when you go to a hospital a nominee is signed a person uh, takes uh, like a nominee for a patient who is given the authority to take decisions when the person is incapacitated which means they are unconscious or say in the icu or whichever same thing here is advance directive clear so let's look at some of the issues now that we discussed in the first slide itself so the identification you know how are you going to identify as an individual that you have a mental health so that is a problem issue major issue with mental health problem in india number 2 who should i approach the stigma angle what kind of treatment kya mujhe shock diya jayega nahi diya jayega wo mental health act, health care act 2017 mein outlaw kar diya gaya hai lack of professionals okay severe lack of professionals in fact psychiatrists and then one more major thing that you're looking at is that insurance cover so you have say a particular disease you seek insurance you already have insurance cover it covers most of the kharcha okay in terms of mental health problems in spite of our government directive insurance companies are unclear or unwilling to provide insurance to individuals with mental health issues do you realize so it becomes a cost intensive process for a patient which means that there needs to be a mechanism to provide the same sort of insurance for say other problems other diseases as mental health problems also ye to zyada kharcha karega to kaun jayega doctor ke paas simple problem hai finance ka problem hai clear okay all right so this is your first question guys we are going to discuss one by one today okay all four topics are to do with prelims today there is no deep dive so lokna lokpriya gopinath bordoloi institute of mental health where is it located central institute of psychiatry okay and national institute of mental health and sciences nimhans where is it located identify the correctly matched all right again common sense should tell you even if you do not know the locations if you just look at the names you should be able to answer this for me all right next question depression eating disorder schizophrenia tourette's adhd substance abuse or drug addiction which of the above are categorized as mental health problems what is bulimia by the way okay again an ncert level discussion see how ncert helps you in solving questions many students ask me this ki ncert padh ke kya hoga bahut kuch hoga sare sawal lagte udhar se okay bulimia is essentially an eating disorder where you eat food okay then after that you are like no 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 i have eaten now i should throw it out so that i can regulate my calories okay bulbul uh, are you seeking treatment i hope you are seeking treatment right i hope you get well all right so bulimia is what you eat food okay and then you throw it all out because you want to measure your calories normally again it is associated with people say in the entertainment industry okay so they have this eating disorder which is called bulimia so is bulimia or eating disorder a mental health issue yes it is it is in fact all right 
So go ahead and answer this for me. What is schizophrenia? What is Tourette's? Tourette's has been discussed, in fact, in fact, showcased and, and, and made. Uh, one movie did a very human job of uh, making sure that the public were aware of what Tourette's is. Okay. I will not name the movie here. But again, go ahead and look, look at this question and answer this for me. Okay, ADHD is attention deficit hyper disorder and substance abuse. So you have individuals say who will be using today's topic, cannabis or say hashish or charas or smack or all of these uh, street available drugs. Then you have the say higher grade of drugs like cocaine and this and that. So does substance abuse count as a mental health issue? Well, I'll give you a hint. United Nations says yes. United Nations says that substance abuse or drug abuse is not just a physical issue. Obviously, it has problems on your brain, on your liver, on your body, on your kidney. Yes, but primarily it is to do with the state of your mind, which is why someone is going ahead and engaging in those sorts of activities. All right. So which of the above can be classified under problems of mental health? I have given you the answer for this more or less. I would still like you to answer this in the comment box. Okay. And finally, we discussed what is advanced directive. Which of the following explains the right to advanced directive? Number one, the way the person wishes to be cared for and treated for a mental illness. Number two, the way the person wishes not to be cared for and treated for a mental illness. Number three, right to appoint a nominated representative. Okay, we discussed what is advanced directive, the right of an individual who is seeking medical help. Okay. So I hope you'll be able to answer this now, guys. Let me know in the chat. Okay. If you face any dis uh, issues or any particular doubts, quickly write me in the chat. I'll try and uh, solve it for you. If I'm unable to, I'll solve it for you later for sure. Okay. All right. So that completes our first topic of the day. Now, this is again closing in a couple of days, guys. 28th is where we are at. 29th, 30th, 31st is when this closes. All right. So, uh, if you are appearing for the civil services next year, if you are still undecided on the course of action as to how you are going to prepare, this would be suggested. Okay, A detailed video on this will be coming on Study IQ English soon. But for the time being, may I just uh, request you, if you haven't gone ahead and looked at the course deliverables, what does Study IQ plan to give you in the entirety, uh, in the duration of this course, go ahead to studyiq.com. Under the live classes uh, banner, go ahead and look at the English batch. Look at the whole plan of action that is put in place for you. Look at the faculty profiles, the mentor profiles. See the testimonies of say previous students who have been associated with this and take an informed decision because we are looking at August already. And uh, it's, it's high time that someone who is looking for say next year begins his or her preparation. Take it. So have a look at this and whenever and if and when you go ahead and sign up for this, use the code BALIVE, you get a big discount and I get to be a part of your batch. Okay, that's where I come in the picture. So this is closing in a couple of days. All right, now we'll discuss cannabis. Okay, known by different names across the country, most uh, commonly known uh, as ganja. Okay, so cannabis medicinal research project is underway by the way. So, for the first time in the history of the country, what you are seeing is that a medical institution, in fact a research institution is now going ahead and looking into the merits of cannabis. And what kind of cannabis? The species that we are looking at is cannabis sativa. Okay, we will discuss today in very uh, like uh, the required detailing for the examination. Okay, so now established in collaboration with Canada. Cannabis will be used to produce pain relief medicine. Okay, so this whole uh, project that has been uh, put forth, the Cannabis Medicinal Research Project, taking place with the help of uh, the Canadian government. And you are looking at CSIR IIIM, which is the Center for Science and uh, the whole thing for this is Institute of Integrative Medicine. Okay. Integrative medicine is using natural products to come up with solutions for health problems. Okay. So now CSIR under the Ministry of Science and Tech. In fact, Dr. Jitendra Singh, he was there. He inaugurated this project. All right. So we'll take a look at this now. What is the mandate of CSIR? To discover and develop new drugs from natural products, which is why cannabis now, it's an organic product. It's a plant. 
So the cannabis plant will now be used to come up with solutions for diseases, for problems that patients face. Okay. So both of plant and microbial origin for national and international markets. Now please understand, CSIR was also the pioneer of the purple revolution. Purple revolution, if you do not know, is to do with aromatic crops. Okay. So aroma, which is different, which is in fact talking about good smell. So you're looking at one such crop, which is the lavender oil crop or the lavender oil product. Okay, extremely useful. Okay, not just say from the uh, usage perspective, but also it has a huge market. So CSIR Institute of Integrative Medicine in Jammu was the first one that uh, pioneered the whole purple revo uh, purple uh, revolution in India. Okay, so indigenous aromatic crop based agroeconomy by shifting from foreign aromatics to homegrown kinds. First and the best example to remember purple uh, revolution is the lavender oil market. It's a huge market. Okay, you can't imagine the level of money uh, that can be made in the lavender oil market. Okay, so that's purple revolution. Now, what is cannabis? Like I told you, it's a generic term that we, you and I use to denote several psychoactive preparations of the plant cannabis sativa. Okay. Now, the UN has categorized cannabis as not a dangerous narcotic. Okay. But at the same time, you will also realize that ca cannabis is also called a gateway drug. So, what is a gateway drug? Something that you consume in the in front of Gateway of India? No. A gateway drug is in fact the introductory drug which will eventually get you hooked onto it, addicted to it and then you like consider going ahead and looking at the more harsher methods of drugs, the harsher drugs, the cocaines and this and I am not even aware of the different names. Okay. So it is considered to be a gateway drug. All right. So cannabis, it is known for relaxing, calming, it apparently makes a person very chill, calm. They also get very hungry and it is said that well, which is why I put a question here, you know, I am not sure how this functions, but apparently it brings out the creativity in you. Okay. So, these are say the recreational uses of ganja or cannabis that you are looking at. However, what is the CSIR looking to do? Like I told you, it is looking to harness cannabis as a plant that is freely available throughout the country. Now, in fact, it ha you will be surprised to know, like I told you, CSIR has gone ahead and obtained a license for cannabis cultivation. Okay. Now, you might ask me, what is the big deal about this? Huh, they are just going to grow cannabis. Usme kya bada baat hai? Well, the, the whole law states, the NDPS Act, okay? We will discuss what the NDPS Act is, that you cannot uh, grow, cultivate, you cannot consume, you cannot transport, you cannot distribute cannabis in the country. Okay, so we will take a look at that. So, cannabis is made up of 120 cannabinoids. In fact, the THC content, okay? This is, in fact, what decides the potency of the cannabis. So, if the THC level is high, which means you are going to be a lot more relaxed and calm, you will be a lot more, what the sense of the word here is, you will be a lot more high. Okay. So, the higher the THC content, the more potent the crop is, the plant is. The lower the THC content, well, it, it's like nothing. Fine. So, cannabis, what happens is, what you are eventually looking at is the fruiting tops. So, ganja as we know it is the fruit, fruiting tops, whereas charas is the raisin which is extracted from the plant. You need to know these two by the way. Okay, This is biology class. You need to know what are fruiting tops, what are the raisins. The sticky material that is gained out of the plant are raisins. They are known as charas. Okay. So, now let's go forward. So, under the Nar Narcotics, Drugs and Psychotropic Substances Act, NDPS Act 1985, the production, manufacture, possession, sale, purchase, transport and use is a punishable offence. Alright, look at all the angles that are covered under the NDPS Act. Now, you might tell me, in 1985, why, this, why was this act introduced? Especially when you consider, say, the history of cannabis usage in India that there exists a social uh, 
prevalence plus religious usage is there. Why is it that this was outlawed? What was the basis of it? So the then Rajiv Gandhi government, in fact it is alleged, okay, newspaper reports have indicated this, these are not my lines, that the Rajiv Gandhi government decided to go ahead and outlaw the, ND, like the cannabis industry under the pressure from the alcohol industry. Okay. That there was no such problem associated with it per se, but because the alcohol industry knew that if this were to be, say, not outlawed or be freely available, then you are looking at their industry getting affected. Okay. So, the act outlaws any mixture with or without any neutral material of any of the two forms of cannabis. So, if you have a potent mixture of these two, you can't have it. All right. Please understand, these are the fruits, the fruitings. And this is, uh, in fact, this is the raisin and this is the fruit. So, besides the raisin and the fruit, so in the plant, all right, you have leaves, you have the stem, all of this is not covered under the law. Samjho ab, law ka loophole pehle samjho. Thik hai? Kya nahi allowed hai, wo toh ab samaj jaoge. Ki ha, ganja, which is the fruiting loops, charas, which is the raisin, not allowed. However, the leaves, the stem, the NDPS Act remains silent. So what do you see? The seeds and leaves of the cannabis plant are not in the ambit of the act because the leaves of the plant have negligible THC. You see, most of the THC of the plant is in the raisin, which is the charas, plus the ganja, which is the fruiting loop. Do you understand that? So the leaves and the stem do not have THC levels, which is why you find that bhang used in holy, yes, which is a paste made of the leaves of the cannabis plant is not outlawed, which is why freely people consume bhang during the festival. Why? Because the NDPS Act does not outlaw bhang. It is made from the leaves of the particular plant. Clear? There are particular states, in fact, in Uttar Pradesh, I have seen that there are shops that sell bhang or, or say uh, products related to this. Okay. That there exists government shops, in fact, licensed government shops that go ahead and sell this product. What does that tell you? That regulation in this market is necessary. Most of the time what you find is that this industry, narcotics industry insofar as ganja and charas is concerned is unregulated. Okay? That if someone needs to go and source a particular material, then there are particular areas, say in a town or a city, you go and you source it for yourself. However, if the government were to come in, what would be the benefit? Quality control. Okay. That you know the amount that you are going, revenue for the government. Do you understand? So, if you are faced with the question as to should, say, cannabis be legalized in India? Well, you are looking at it from the infrastructural, the, uh, the institutional perspective, in fact. Okay. One, that yes, it leads to better quality control. Right now, the market is open, unregulated. The money that, say, a person invests in buying a particular product from this unregulated market may eventually find its way to say some terrorist network or for some anti-social elements. Would it not be better for that money to go to the government exchequer that can be used for say development later on? You are also looking at how? You are also looking at uh, uh, making sure that there is better control. Okay? Revenue to hai, control bhi rahega, quality bhi improve hoga. Okay? So, CBD oil again. So, the oil now that is made from the leaves of the plant, it also does not come under the NDPS Act. In fact, the NDPS Act is only about the raisin plus the fruit. Okay. This is not allowed. However, what you also find is that the recreational use is outlawed. But, well, it's because uh, it's a part of the social structure of the country. You know, it's used in puja part. You have sadhus who consume it, it is used in festivals, which is why the enforcement of this is very lax. So, rather than have lax enforcement, it's better to go ahead and open up the market, you know, bring it under the fold of the government, make sure that there is effective regulation, product quality testing is done, and then with organizations like CSIR, Triple IM, you can go ahead and research more on cannabis to provide for better health solutions. Now, what health solutions you will tell me? Ki kya hoga? Ganja pee ke kya help, health solution ho sakta hai? Nahin, koi normal individual ko to koi health solution nahi hoga. But then, 
there are certain diseases where this helps so say patients of chemotherapy you know if you have cancer and if you are say undergoing chemotherapy the effects on the body are quite wide ranging and far reaching okay that you lose appetite so again because consumption of cannabis increases appetite brings that what it is called in say popular lingo it is called munchies that you get munchies once you have cannabis okay so that helps in say appetite building for a patient you are looking at help for patients of glaucoma okay are you able to understand this there is usage of this in the medicinal uh, 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 field which is why you find certain american states have gone ahead and legalized cannabis use okay why have they done it obviously revenue part is there but then this creates the ecosystem guys that we always talk about that the ecosystem is created first by bringing things into the fold rather than leaving them astray samajh rahe ho aap so this is the ndps act and cannabis in india now just look at this very quickly so you will understand go ahead and look at this by the way okay so the good part the bad part and then you are looking at all of them charas ganja bhang and nowadays you have marijuana meals so you have uh, pastries and cakes and tea coffee biscuits cookies all of that are made using these uh, leaves okay so again as from the enforcement point of view think how difficult will it be to for someone to go ahead and catch say cannabis laced cookies okay kaise pata karoge aap do you realize and so the many uses you are looking at oil cbd oil okay extreme useful in the medical okay you are looking at mulch compost cosmetics food all of these imagine the whole industry that is there for cannabis in india okay huge industry which is why the first step would be to go ahead and repeal the ndps act 1985 or at least go ahead and change the scope of the act bring it more to say the contemporary reality of 2023 are you able to understand and grasp that guys yes if you were uh, able to understand the, the topic for me because this is important if you are able to understand cannabis if you are able to understand mental health problem go ahead and leave me a like very quickly very quickly please all right i will be forever grateful to you okay so this question i have for you now based on this particular uh, discussion that we had idukki gold is a coffee variety grown in kerala is it is idukki gold a coffee variety ndps act is enforced by the narcotics control bureau which ministry controls the narcotics uh, control bureau guys give me the answer the narcotics control bureau is normally headed by an serving indian police service officer so which ministry will be holding uh, the charge of it bataiye mujhe okay ndps act excludes seeds leaves and raisins bhang is permitted under the ndps act identify the correct statements you will let me know the answer for this okay but let me know though who is the a person in charge of the Na narcotics control bureau and which ministry does the ncb report to okay besides say the ndps act okay the ganja the charas basically the raisin plus the fruit the leaves and the stem okay the ncb all right your whole cannabis is done no about the medical applications of cannabis in india or throughout the whole world your answer is ready okay but let me know somewhere in the chat ncb ka parent ministry kaun sa hai mujhe aap batayenge all right let's go forward this one again revolutions in india let me know to answer to this to purple revolution aromatic crops we discussed it today purple revolution is to do with aromatic crops agro economic crops one example i gave you was of lavender oil okay so the first one is correct bakiyon ke aap mujhe batayenge was great to do with egg or poultry pink to do with onion jiska price abhi bahut bhaga hua tha black revolution to do with petroleum which are the incorrectly matched ones here please let me know in the chat or in the comment box after the class is over okay i have uh, deepak can i provide monthly or fortnightly gist of lectures absolutely deepak thanks for the suggestion i'll get started on it and you are correct deepak home affairs ministry of home affairs is ncb all right let's look at parliamentary privileges now guys this house is in session so we'll be discussing a lot more of uh, <clears throat> the uh, polity centered topics okay just give me a second
करेक्ट मंदीप राजन सही बोल रहे हो एम एच ए होम अफेयर ऑल राइट पार्लियामेंट्री प्रिवलेजेस राइट एंड इम्यूनिटीज दैट आर गिवन इंडिविजुअली एंड कलेक्टिवली टू आर मेंबर्स ऑफ पार्लियामेंट सो दैट इट हेल्प देम इन द डिस्चार्ज ऑफ द ड्यूटीज ओके दैट्स पार्लियामेंट्री प्रिवलेजेस नाउ वेन एनी ऑफ दीज राइट एंड इम्यूनिटीज आर डिसरिगार्डेड द ऑफेंस इज कॉल्ड ब्रीच ऑफ प्रिवलेज सो वट हैपन जस्ट टू डेज अगो अलेज टू हैव हैपन इन द पार्लियामेंट दैट मल्लिका अर्जुन खर्गे द लीडर ऑफ द कांग्रेस पार्टी he was making a statement and then he says that his mic was turned off now the member of a parliament okay he is again the leader of the opposition i believe okay so again you have a member of the parliament who is speaking in the house and if his mic is turned off it amounts to infringing on his right or his freedom of speech which is a privilege given to a member of a parliament so you cannot do that which means that the breach of the privilege has been caused which means again he can go ahead and file a motion saying that i want to go ahead and raise this issue for the consideration of the rajya sabha chairman that my rights as a member of the parliament have been trampled upon samajh rahe aap so what would malika arjun kharge do now he would move in a motion and then he will say okay that say, such and such individual or such and such party or such and such members are responsible for say the breach of my privilege my right as a member of parliament to speak in the house all right so now its purpose is to censure the concerned minister breach of the privilege was first referred what happens now he will first approach say jagdeep dhankar the chairperson the chairman of the rajya sabha now the vice president the chairman he may either give a decision himself take the decision adjudicate himself or he will refer it to a privileges committee that is completely his discretion his uh, decision the privileges committee will then examine the facts of the allegation and then decide the punishment and the quantum of punishment okay because you do know that the parliament can meet out to punishments also if someone causes undue uh, disrespect of the parliament yes you can be punished clear so may adjudicate himself or refer to the privileges committee privileges committee again for both lok sabha and rajya sabha is present we'll discuss the number of members also theek hai let's go forward so privileges are extended to union ministers and attorney general in fact if you have if you have read your uh, if you have read your basic uh, polity you will know that uh, the parliament Includes say not just the members, the speaker, the chairman, but also includes those who have a right to speak, say the Attorney General of India. Okay, it also includes the President of India. Does it not? Does the Parliament of India include the President of India? Absolutely. However, what you find is that President of India is not given any parliamentary privileges, in spite of the fact that he is a part of the parliamentary structure. He is not given any privileges because. presidential privileges are a completely separate segment okay article 368 i believe 361 okay so your uh, learnings from here minister ko milta hai attorney general ko milta hai president ko nahi milta hai president ka alag hi rehta hai parliamentary uh, presidential privileges theek hai so article 105 of the constitution mentions two privileges one freedom of speech which malika arjun kharge is saying has been infringed upon when his mic was switched off and the right of publication of its proceedings clear now the code of civil procedure so look at this it's just not the constitution but you are also looking at the cpc now which mentions that say you have freedom from detention and arrest when the house is in uh, session or 40 days after the session 40 days prior to the session or if you are a part of a committee of the house ठीक है तब भी एप्लीकेबल रहेगा आप पे ठीक है प्रोटेक्शन फ्रॉम डिटेंशन एंड अरेस्ट इज देर नाउ द प्रिवलेज कमेटी लाइक वी डिस्कस इन द लास्ट स्लाइड लोकसभा हैज 15 राज्यसभा हैज 10 देयर जॉब्स आर टू एग्जामिन द फैक्ट्स ऑफ द केस व्हेन द स्पीकर और द चेयरपर्सन रेफर्स अ ब्रीच ऑफ प्रिवलेज मैटर टू द कमेटी सो डू दे गो हेड एग्जामिन द केस एंड दे कैन गो हेड एंड मेट आउट पनिशमेंट आल्सो क्लियर now the main specific question i have for you is this 
before we discuss the main specific question now so the kerala high court okay so what did the kerala high court observe what did it say that okay you have privileges but then they are not an immunity okay it is not to be considered as an immunity especially if you go ahead and engage in vandalism in the house disruption in the house okay if you are engaging in say a particular like you must have seen in some certain um, legislatures where individuals have thrown papers or chairs broken stuff even in our own parliament you had an individual stand up on the whole chair and stamp on it so what did the kerala high court observe that you are a member of a parliament a representative of the people you have a responsibility to conduct yourself in a manner that is fair so in the name of disruption you cannot engage in vandalism in that case you are not accorded any parliamentary privileges okay that you have the same obligation as a citizen of india that private that parliamentary privileges are given to a member of a parliament or attorney general or a minister to only function in the effective discharge of their duties you cannot use it to engage in uh, bad behavior okay so the question i have for you parliamentary privileges are not gateways of immunity comment go ahead it's a very brief answer that i'm looking at don't uh, go ahead and give me the whole history of parliamentary privileges talk about how it is meant to empower a member of a parliament to effectively discharge their duties and now is being misused by certain members of parliament to engage in say vandalism disrespect of the chair okay vandalism disrespect of the chair okay you are also looking at problems of the disrespect of fellow mps okay because again agar aapka as a member of parliament if you have a parliamentary privilege well so does the other member of parliament so can you engage in obnoxious behavior just because you have parliamentary privilege can you go ahead and engage in outright vandalism so that is the focus of this question go ahead and answer this for me in no more than 150 words actually okay very important question especially from the mains perspective i would prepare for it clear all right let's go forward now finally we come to the last topic of the day the hulock gibbon has been in the news specifically why because the global gibbon network okay the global given gibbon network recently met in china this has 20 countries by the way this global given network india is also a part of it given again this cute looking uh, ape all right extremely threatened in fact two kinds that you find in india of the given all two kinds found in the northeast okay one is vulnerable one is threatened theek okay? hai so the global given network a network of 20 countries that have population of gibbons within their territorial borders they all come together to discuss solutions to make sure that this beautiful animal does not go extinct because currently what you're looking at is the whole population of gibbons across the world is around 12000 only so that's that's a very less number okay so the gibbons smallest and fastest of all apes in fact they are an ape live in tropical and subtropical forests in southeastern part of asia what you are looking at is this area in fact a large part of say uh, south of the brahmaputra river okay this is where the whole uh, distribution is so you have this particular area okay and then this area so south of the brahmaputra river to the west of the dibang river this is your area of distribution for gibbons in india all right and you have two kinds that you find the eastern gibbon the western gibbon all right india has more population of the western hulock gibbon whereas the eastern hulock gibbon you find most of it in myanmar in uh, arunachal pradesh also and there after the other states theek hai so if the question asks you which type of gibbon is more prevalent or found in india well your answer should be the western hulock gibbon not the eastern hulock gibbon all right let's go forward and have a look at this now 
So, the hula gibbon, unique to India's northeast, one of the 20 species of gibbons on earth, all of them are under threat. Okay. So, the western hula, which is more in the Indian territory, is endangered according to the IUCN red list. Whereas, the one that is to the eastern one in Myanmar, well, that is vulnerable. However, you also find it in India. Okay. It's not that you only find western hula gibbon. So, if the question mentions that India only has western hula gibbon, incorrect. It also has eastern, however, in lesser number than the western. So, both species are listed on Schedule 1 of the Wildlife Protection Act. Highest priority, highest level of protection is given to them. Clear? Please know their status. One is endangered, one is vulnerable. Clear? Okay. So, this is again an area of distribution that you are looking at. Make sure that you just know the difference between the western one and the eastern one. Alright. The physiological, the physical differences are not important for you to remember. But do make sure that you know the area of distribution. The primary way to identify a hula gibbon, I will tell you. Okay. So, the primary way you can identify one is through this. You know, they have extensive dark bushy eyebrows. That's how you identify a gibbon. <laughs> Thanks, Arka. All right. Okay. So, go ahead. Answer this question for me also. Golden Mahasir, Indian Vulture, Olive Ridley Turtles. First group. Second group, Red Panda, Snow Leopard, Kashmir Stag, also called as Hangul. I hope. Naam to suna hi hoga. Hangul ka. Right? Nahi suna hai to Monday se aap sunenge. When this uh, environment series begins, and trust you me, we will go in death. You should not be making one mistake when it comes to environment questions here on. Alright. Next, Indian Bustard, Indian Vulture, Kashmir Stag, or none of the above or all of the above. Which of the above comprises critically endangered species in India? Okay, I will read out the options. First option is Golden Mahasir, Indian Vulture, Olive Ridley. Second option, Red Panda, Snow Leopard, Hangul. Third option, Indian Bustard, Indian Vulture, Kashmir Stag. You will let me know which of the group is critically endangered according to the IUCN LAL list? Ye aap mujhe batayenge chat mein. Give, leave your answers in this format. It's easier for me to collate. But make sure that if you're watching this whole class, go ahead and answer. Including the mains question. Don't worry Deepak, it'll be fun. I absolutely promise you that. Okay. That uh, the, the environment series is going to be end to end. You don't need to spend one rupee for that. All you need to do is spend your time here with me on Study IQIS. Three days a week, we go in depth. In depth, we will go. Okay. Okay. So, that completes the class for today. Okay. That is the wrap for the class. I will be expecting your answers to the question on parliamentary privileges. You know now what is parliamentary privileges. You also know about the Kerala High Court judgment. Form an opinion. Okay. That can MPs use the rights and immunities that are given to them individually and collectively as a part of the parliamentary privilege to cause vandalism in the house. Are, is that a gross total blanket immunity? No. Alright. Okay. Any questions guys? Very quickly. Arka, even I am very excited. I am equally excited as you. Rajan. Please tell me how I prepare international relations from scratch. Well, Rajan, uh, if you attended yesterday's class, in two minutes or less, if I have to tell you how to go about preparing your IR, okay? From the exam perspective, not from, say, becoming an expert in international relations like Dr. Subramaniam Jaishankar. If you want to clear the examination perspective, if this is the India, Indian map, start from here. Start with India-Sri Lanka relations, then Bhutan, then Nepal, then Bangladesh, First, start from BIMSTEC, okay, BBIN, SARC. Initially, start from your local neighborhood, okay. Understand what is the point of each body, what is the relationship that each country shares. Our relationship with India, Sri Lanka, India's relationship with Sri Lanka is different from, say, India's relationship with Bhutan. If you can give me four differences between the relationships, five differences, okay, that's a good beginning. Start from a local neighborhood, then go on region-wise. Region-wise preparation helps in uh, 
uh, international relations with a focus on organizations okay because again how will you know organization so for example if you know quad okay if you know quad you can immediately tell me about uh, ipef okay this is it if you know about asean you will be able to tell me about the free trade agreement or why india was not a part of rcep samajh rahe ho so go uh, organization wise wherever india has a stake so shanghai cooperation organization has been in the news g7 has been in the news brics has been in the news all right so that is how you go about preparing pehle immediate neighborhood se shuru karo kyunki if you do not know your neighbor what international relation do you know all right okay any questions for me guys quickly bataiye i'll be happy to take them on because uh, well i'm sure you must have some uh, questions for me any question any statement any comment i'll appreciate that if you enjoyed this class if you learned something out of the four topics that we did today go ahead and leave me a like i'm also very grateful to those students who leave me uh, feedback on the videos both positive and negative you know it's most welcome thank you to the positive ones i am happy to note your uh, feedback i hope that we continue in the same breath to the negative ones i will improve and make sure that you are a regular viewer of this editorial edge see side ke maths ka problem aa raha hai uh, arka aisa hai is saal ke isme mat jaye aap okay don't take 2023 to be uh, the rule it could be the exception however what i suggest right now is that right now is probably not the best time to start preparing for see side okay what you can do is go ahead and say work at the basics मैथ्स का अगर देख रहे हो एनसीआरटी के ऊपर मत उठो अभी योर प्रॉब्लम एरिया इन व्हेन आई स्पोक टू स्टूडेंट्स फॉर टू जीरो टू थ्री वॉज दैट द मैथ्स क्वेश्चंस वेयर लॉन्ग दे वेर डिफिकल्ट एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दैट मेनी ऑफ देम लेफ्ट आउट द इंग्लिश बिट और द रीजनिंग बिट योर जॉब इज टू क्लियर द एग्जामिनेशन ओके सो आउट ऑफ द थ्री सेक्शन दो तो आपको बहुत अच्छे से पक्के करने एंड इफ यू आर से आर्ट स्टूडेंट एंड इफ यू आर नॉट से वेरी कंफर्टेबल विथ मैथ्स at least have the basic level ncert level knowledge right now the main tricks and tips all of that can be incorporated into your foundational knowledge say by december jan feb abhi aap daloge na to bhul jaoge fir theek hai so right now you should only look at ncert level maths 10th ka math kitab uthao aur cover to cover kar dalo theek hai okay thank you so much everyone uh, if you found this class beneficial again leave me a like and share this with any of your friends and family who will find this beneficial going forward this will be a regular feature up until the upsc 2024 prelims okay on that note it's a wrap i will see you guys uh, tomorrow morning 8 am and i also hope that most of you and in fact all of you will join me monday onwards as we begin this new environment series all right that will make sure that it's covered for you from the prelims and mains perspective